Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear Muslim brothers and sisters worldwide, it's the Warner, and I would like to praise and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have allowed me to present and explain this long awaited video series Unraveling the Art of the Hidden Leaves. Over it are 19. Alayha tis'ata asha. This video series, The Art of the Hidden Leaves, is an accumulation of over a decade of intense studies in the glorious Quran, advanced expert Arabic grammar, as well as many scientific researches and studies in physics, theory of quantum mechanics, and information theory. Due to the gravity and importance of this video series, it has been divided into two main sections, section 1 and section 2. This first section consists of a few parts called 1A, this video, 1B, and 1C that will include many subparts or videos. Section 1A, 1B, and 1C will contain certain intellectual prerequisites to make sure that we are on the same page on certain important subjects that involves everyday experiences. These subjects in the first section, 1A, 1B, and 1C, will interconnect with Section 2. Section 2, on the other hand, will mainly have many subparts or videos which will connect to Section 1A, 1B, and 1C in order to effectively explain and appreciate the beauty of the Quran's unique and miraculous cipher intricacy. It would also facilitate the deciphering as well as to better understand the meaning of Over it are 19, by Allah's permission through the Quran alone. So, once we properly and effectively go through this video section, 1A, 1B, and 1C, we will then be ready for section 2 as it includes the full explanation of Over it are 19, Surah 74 verse 30, The Art of the Hidden Leaves, and many other important related Quranic subjects. Additionally, the other objectives of section 1a, 1b, and 1c, and section 2 of this video series are to completely enlighten your perspective of how you currently view the glorious Quran, and to warn you about the most important event that is to come, insha'Allah. Thus, for those who study the Quran, Allah's worshippers, listen carefully, take notes and pay close attention to the first section, 1a, 1b, and 1c, as I will be connecting the dots of these subjects once we get to section 2. Indeed, be patient. Allah, God, loves the patient ones. That being said, the first section has now begun and I will be going through some mind-boggling information. So if you need to pause and rewind, make sure you do so. Question. What does intelligence, knowledge, news, communication, and data have in common? If we quickly first define intelligence on Google, we get this. Intelligence. 1. The ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. And number 2. The collection of information of military and political value. So, intelligence is related to acquiring and applying knowledge. In its second definition, intelligence is related to information collection or gathering. Now, if we define knowledge, it says, Knowledge 1. Information, facts, and skills acquired by a person through experience or education, the theoretical or practical understanding of a subject. Also, if you look below, it says, what is known in a particular field or in total facts and information. Now let's define news. News. Newly received or noteworthy information, especially about recent or important events. And below says, information not previously known to someone. And as for communication. Communication. The imparting or exchanging of information or news. And below, a letter or a message containing information or news. And number two, the means of sending or receiving information such as telephone lines or computers. And finally, data, which is the plural form of the singular data. Facts and statistics collected together for reference or analysis. And below, you have datum, which defines as a piece of information. And now that we have those five definitions, what does intelligence, knowledge, news, communication, and data have in common. As you may have noticed, they all contain information. Matter of a fact, pretty much everything contains information in this information age. 
So what is information? Yes, what is information? As simple as it sounds, it's most likely not what you think it is. But let's first see again through Google. Information. Facts provided or learned by something or someone. Okay, look at this one. What is conveyed or represented by a particular arrangement or sequence of things? That's really interesting, but not clear. And below this, an in information theory, a mathematical quantity expressing the probability of occurrence of a particular sequence of symbols, impulses, etc., as contrasted with that of alternative sequences. The first definition is very general, but not exactly what information is. And the second one is very interesting, but it isn't very clear because what is conveyed is usually the message and the message is not the medium in which it was sent. I'll be coming back to that later inshallah. And note below, in information theory, it is a mathematical quantity expressing the probability of occurrence of a particular sequence of symbols, impulses, etc. as contrasted with that of alternative sequences. This definition is very true in computer science as this definition is based on Shannon's entropy equation which provides a way to estimate the average minimum number of bits needed to encode a string of symbols based on the frequency of the symbols. I'll be coming back to that later as well, inshallah. But note, this definition is an information theory, and information is a theory for a reason. And a theory is a supposition or a system of ideas intended to explain something, especially one based on general principles independent of the thing to be explained. And a supposition is an uncertain belief. Matter of a fact, information contains a lot of uncertainty. Although we all seem to have an idea of what information is, however, it's nearly impossible to define it clearly. Here, let me demonstrate what I mean by that and why information is a theory. Let's say we have a USB key with one exabyte storage space, memory. By the way, there's no such thing as a one exabyte USB key or flash key or a secure digital card. SD card. It's currently impossible to manufacture because one exabyte is one quintillion bytes. The symbol for exabyte is EB. One exabyte is 1000 to the power of 6 bytes, which is equal to 10 to the power of 18 bytes, which is basically one with 18 zeros bytes. Or 1000 petabytes, or 1 million terabytes, or 1 billion gigabytes. Hence, an exabyte is huge. And a Google is 10 to the power of 100, which is where Google got its name from. Google, however, stores much more than a Google. The corporate headquarters complex of Google is called the Googleplex. And a Googleplex is also a number which is 10 to the power of a Google. So 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 100. A Googleplex is so enormous and incomprehensible that if you write a book with a number 1 and then a Googleplex of zeros with the font size of 1, the amount of physical books to print so many zeros will not even physically fit in our entire observable universe. That's how huge a Googleplex number is. Thus, Google and its headquarters, the Googleplex, is based on this number because Google stores enormous amounts of data, information. That's why some mathematicians say that there is no need to go near infinite as gigantic numbers are already incomprehensible. So back to why information is a theory with the imaginary one exabyte USB key stick example, which can hold about 300 million hours of good quality video. So for the sake of this example, let's say you have a futuristic one exabyte USB drive like this. And then we weigh this one exabyte USB key stick or drive while it's empty, meaning there's zero information in it. So the balance tells us that the one exabyte USB key stick weighs about 19 grams. Now, if I plug the one exabyte USB key stick into a one zettabyte hard drive and then fill up the one exabyte USB key stick with one billion gigabytes, so which is equal to one exabyte, of information. So the one exabyte is completely full of information. In other words, I just filled up the empty one exabyte USB key completely. The question I have for you is, Will this one exabyte USB key stick completely full with information be heavier than an empty one exabyte USB key stick with no information? So will it be heavier or not? In other words, will the one exabyte USB key stick weigh more than 19 grams if it is full of information? Remember, 
one exabyte USB key stick or flash drive completely full is like having one billion gigabyte USB drives full of information. So I'll give you a few seconds to think about that. If you thought it's heavier when it's full, then you're wrong. But if you answered they have the same weight, then congratulations, you are correct because whether the USB key is full or empty, it will weigh the same. So the example of the one exabyte USB drive being filled up with information or empty, they both have the exact same weight. That is because information is massless. It cannot be weighed. It's in its own invisible field. Mass is a property of physical objects from subatomical particles to clusters of galaxies. In contrast, information is an abstract concept, not a real physical object, so it cannot have mass. Although it doesn't have mass, we can encode information on physical objects in many ways. These physical objects are the mediums. The mediums are things we encode the information on. For example, a piece of paper, a book, or a hard drive, which usually have mass, but this mass is not the mass of the information itself, nor is there any correlation between the amount of information encoded on an object and its mass. For instance, if I carve my name or any word on a tree or a rock, I actually reduce its mass. Think about that. There will be less mass on the medium. However, if you write the word bird with ink on a piece of paper, but a bird is not ink or paper, and ink and paper are not a bird, obviously. The paper itself is not the information. The information is represented in the pattern of ink symbols that lies on the paper's surface. Thus, in this case, ink and paper, to create the information, you have to add material. Information must not be confused with meaning. For example, two messages, one of which is heavily loaded with meaning, and the other of which is pure nonsense, random, can be exactly equivalent as regards to information from the present viewpoint. Same amount of letters. The semantic, meaning of language or logic, aspects of communication are irrelevant to the engineering aspects. In other words, the message and the medium are not the same thing. The medium is not the message. The medium, book, paper, ink, USB key, etc., carries the information, but it is not the information or the message itself. The message can be sent in many different forms with the exact same information. This is why information is a theory. Pretty strange, huh? It will get even stranger later on. So keep that in your mind. But if information is a theory, then is information real? It definitely is real. Because it can have a direct impact on you, like reading a negative or positive comment. The fact that you are watching this video is real because the massless information, like light, is transported through these physical mediums and we process it in our sophisticated minds that God, Allah, gave us. Allah, God, also gave us one of the most amazing tools, our hands. With hands, we are able to make other tools that benefit us in many ways. Besides having clothes on, this trait of making tools to make tools and use other tools is what distinguishes us in our intelligence versus all other creatures, not including angels or genes or crows. Because of our current understanding of this mysterious nature of information, we have created powerful tools that enable us to transport, manipulate, encode, and decode information through nano-sized transistors. And these tools are computers.